Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants video. And today's video, I'll say right away, the topic of today's video I've been trying to get out since essentially the draft. And I kinda, you know, things came up, time passed by, I kinda forgot about it a little. But at the same time, I've addressed this before. You know, about how the Giants are adapting the Patriots way on their defense. I talked about it in my most recent Jadavion Clowney video that I did a couple weeks ago. I talked about it, I think, in my Xavier McKinney and, you know, like the versatility of the draft video. And maybe the other one sprinkled in there, but those two are the main ones where I address this topic. The reason I'm putting this out is to sort of bring it all into one place, right? Because I, I just wanted it to be in one place for you guys rather than you having to go to like two or three different videos to get my opinion on the way that we're building the defense. So with that being said, how are we building the defense? What, what is the Patriots way? What I mean by that is that we're building the defense um, with the secondary in mind as the primary focus of that side of the ball. We're building it from back to front rather than front to back, which is what most teams in the NFL do. Whether your, your team runs a 3-4 defense, whether it runs a 4-3, a 4-6, you know, a, a mixed 3-4, whatever scheme you're running, for the most part, I want to say like maybe 85-90% of teams in the NFL build it with the front end in mind first and then they build front to back. They build it so that they have their main part of the defense being whoever is generating pressure. So that's either the outside linebackers or the defensive linemen up front. That's why it's called front to back, you know, obviously. So for example, we take a team like the like the Rams, they just popped into my mind for some reason. That's a team that's built front to back where Aaron Donald and those guys up front you know, being the main focus of it and the secondary actually being the secondary position in the team, you know, being the supporting cast to the front seven or I, I, I would even say to the front five really, you know, I'm, I'm thinking three, def three defensive linemen, you know, two outside linebackers, you know, not really necessarily front seven, more so whoever's generating pass rush. For the Giants right now, you had it been, you know, this draft gone the way, like say we took a pass rush or something, we would be building front to back but we took a lot of uh defensive guys in the secondary and also in free agency our biggest signing was of course james bradbury to be our number one cornerback and right now most of the focus of the defense most of the offseason moves have been in that secondary area whether it's safety cornerback a mixture of the two um linebacker you know it's been on that back side the defense rather than the front and that is how the patriots have been building their defenses for essentially the past now, I'm not gonna go all right and say definitely for the past 20 so I'm just gonna say for the past 10 actually got a little bit more experience with that than I do the past 20 but that's how the Patriots that's how they've been building their defense for the past 10 years and let's look back at last year just these past couple of years since like say 2017 or so the main guy on their defense the elite players on their defense has been in the secondary guys like Devin McCourty guys like uh, their best player on their team right now in my opinion Stefan Gilmore the focus of that defense and really the defense that for the first half of the season last year people were considering historic in terms of how good it was comparing it to the 85 Bears but not because of how they were getting to the quarterback but because of how they were stifling other teams' offenses is because of the way the blanketing that was taking place in the secondary. The, um, you know, the cornerbacks were sticking to their guys. They were schemed up really well to prevent passing lanes from opening up. The safeties were coming down and hitting hard and getting, you know, interceptions, batting balls. The secondary was doing a lot of the work and the defensive front, you know, the defensive line was kind of supporting them. They were clogging up the run, forcing the team to pass into the dangerous elite secondary of the Patriots and occasionally of course the defense will get you know their their sacks and they will get their pressures on the QBs because of the fact that there's no there's nowhere to pass so they're holding on to the ball and an interesting stat that I found in that I spoke about in that clowny video is that last year there was not one single Patriots player with double digit sacks they definitely took a sack by committee approach and once again something else you could say for the past 10 years really Patriots have been focused on getting sacked by committee, something that Dave Gellman has spoken about before, saying that you don't necessarily need that Khalil Mack, that Aaron Donald guy on your team to get sacks. Not every, not every team is equipped with such an elite player that gets 15, 20 sacks a season, but you can generate it, you know, by a scheme, by committee, by several players. And if in the end, 
the total amount of sacks your team has is the same as let's like let's say the Bears a team that does have that one elite player then it doesn't really make a difference and in my opinion it is kind of better because you could plug and play anybody so if if your team is dependent on getting sacks you know as a whole because of one guy that guy goes down with an injury or he sits out because of a contract dispute whatever the case is let's just say he's out for a game your team is going to be in trouble versus if it's sacked by committee if everybody's doing it you know as a whole you can plug and play anybody and get them to work in the scheme and getting back to that not one person on the patriots last year had double digit sacks their sack leader was jamie collins with seven so you know relatively close to 10 not really that much and then if you go back in you know just past couple of years the last patriots player i think that had double digit sacks for them was chandler jones in 2015 with 12 and a half sacks and then him again in 2013 with 11 and a half sacks so the patriots for a while now have sort of shifted off from building front to back and shifted towards that mentality of building back to front having the elite players in the secondary and right now that is what the giants are doing certainly i think the most underrated it went from the weakest to the most underrated part of our defense now is the secondary. We got James Bradbury back here. We got DeAndre Baker, Julian Love, Jabil Peppers, of course, the steal of the draft, Xavier McKinney brought in Darnay Holmes, um, guys that were on the team a while now, Grant Haley from last year, Corey Ballantyne year before that, Sam Beal. We got so many people back there that you could definitely argue that the, the front office and Joe Judge and these guys are kind of throwing things at the wall and I'm not gonna say the exact word but you guys know what I'm talking about to see if anything sticks except that it's not random it's um guys that are hard workers guys that have motors that don't give up on plays and really smart pointing out specifically talking about this rap Xavier McKinney and Darnay Holmes some of the smartest players in the draft with Darnay Holmes being considered the smartest player prospect coming out in this NFL draft and you're bound to get production from this secondary we're super young the oldest player is james bradbury our number one corner 26 very very young secondary with tons of potential because of the type of hard workers that they are and is it really a surprise that we're going this way this patriots way no not just because joe judge obviously has his roots in new england but so is patrick graham who did he work with last year brian flores who was brian flores before he was the head coach of the dolphins well he was the linebackers coach for the Patriots and a, and a great defensive coach there that definitely helped them get a couple championships. And what was the focus of the Dolphins team last year? They didn't have any pass rushers. Let's keep it real. The Dolphins did not have anybody up front that was scaring the other team. They were dangerous in the secondary before Minka Fitzpatrick left. You know, the Dolphins had, I think they had the two best safeties in the league, two top five safeties in the league in their secondary. And that's what their, their focus was on. That's how they built it. They got uh, sacks because of the secondary, just like I think the Giants are going to do, both because of the fact that we're going to be blanketing, you know, these receivers and tight ends so much that the quarterbacks are sitting back there a while, and because of the fact because that we're versatile. Looking at Xavier McKinney, Julian Love, and Jabril Peppers mostly, but we could blitz the pass, you know, the passer at any time, and he's going to be confused as to which one of those three guys is coming at him. That's something that's very much in play here, blitzing from the secondary and getting sacks because of the coverage. This is something that offensive coordinators are going to be thinking about because we have such versatile players they're going to be trying to figure out who's coming down and when are they coming down and we all know the patriots are extremely notorious for doing that especially with mccourtney and gilmore another way that we're building the patriots way is the way they're spending their money on the defense right now we're playing the franchise tag to Leonard Williams, which I've said millions of times was a dumb decision. He's not worth $16.1 million, but we are paying him. So we're paying 16.1 mil to Leonard Williams, but we're only playing, paying around a million each to Thomason and Dexter Lawrence as of right now, subject to change, you know, should we give an extension to Dalvin Thomason? Or, but that defensive line, the three starters as a whole, definitely very affordable, very cheap. And where is most of the money on defense right now, both because of the fact that we had a big signing in James Bradbury and just because of the amount of bodies we have back there, it's in the secondary. Which other team in the league does that? Patriots. And last year, their highest payer, highest payer, highest player after Tom Brady was Stephon Gilmore. And in general, when you talk about the defensive line, in terms of salary, they ranked 26th in the league with what they spent on the defensive linemen. That's what the Giants are doing here. And this is all about, you know, potential and possibilities. For this to even work out, the coaching has to be right and these guys have to live up to their potential. Right now, you know, it's like the base is there. The, the pieces of the puzzle is there. It just has to be put together by a good coach and by good coaching. 
Um, it definitely has the potential to be a similar defense to the Patriots. In terms of performance, I do think we could reach what they've had for the past 10 years in being a you know consistent top 10 defense in the league and one that is different in a sense that is ways that is built that causes offensive coordinators to be confused a little bit and definitely causes problems for the opposing offenses we have the potential to reach that it's just now whether or not the coaches carry through with it the possibilities are kind of endless but i do like the way the defense is being built i'm definitely on board for this patriots way it's kind of interesting we're gonna have a cowboys offense and a patriots defense and going off of recent history not too bad cowboys have almost always been a top 10 offense in the league Patriots have always been a top 10 defense in the league. Should things come out, you know, to fruition, we're in good sets, guys. Let me know what you all think. I just want to get it together in one video, as I stated before. Uh, put your comments down below. What do you think about the Patriots way? You know, that quote, that quote unquote phrase, put it all there. I'm out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.